Hey everyone, this is Baram Shirazi from RPP. Um, today we're going to go over analyzing blast motion data. Uh, in the last webinar, I covered um, understanding the information. Today we're actually going to take a step forward and analyze the data and see what it's telling us. So in uh, today's game, uh, technology can just about measure everything uh, and puts out tons of raw data. Basically, if it moves, it can be measured. Um, the issue really isn't getting the information. Um, it's actually about analyzing it, figuring out what it's telling you, and then knowing what to do to apply the information to make you better. Uh, this is where things can get a little complicated. Uh, so today in this webinar, we're going to simplify what BLAST is telling you. And we're likely going to go a step further than, uh, than what you've heard previously. BLAST collects data on uh, 10 different metrics, which they put in four different buckets. Um, one is called plane, one is called connection, um, one is called rotation, and they also have additional metrics which they provide for, for additional context. Uh, we've reviewed these in the prior webinar called Understanding Blast Metrics, so if you'd like to refer to them for specifics and more explanation, please feel free to do that, but we'll be going over these categories uh, with additional analysis in this webinar. Everyone knows that uh, heading can be extremely variable from swing to swing. Um, we generally suggest 30 to 50 swings at least for data collection and analysis. Um, as a starting point, you can compare your um, averages to what BLAST um, suggested ranges and averages are. Um, however, just because of the variability of, of swing in a bat, um, we strongly suggest that you go a little bit deeper than just looking at averages. Uh, a better way to look at um, <clears throat> the data from an analysis standpoint is just using a little statistical normal distribution type of analysis to see how your swings lay out because there is a ton of variability. Uh, so let's get into a few examples here. So let's quickly review what, what I'm talking about when I say normal distribution. It's probably not a term that most people are familiar with. It's a statistical term. Um, Swing, swing in a bat's um, variable. We covered that in the prior slide. Um, when you take 100 swings, every single swing is going to be different. Some of it has to do with the location of the ball. Some of it has to do with your postural tendencies as you swing a bat. Um, and the whole idea behind a normal distribution is it's a chart. It's a summary chart of all your swings in one place. Um, it kind of looks like a bell curve. Uh, like you see here on this um, on this slide. Uh, the average would generally be the middle. So in this case, where it says 0.3 on the y-axis, 30% of your swings um, were near the average of, let's say, where the dashed yellow line is, the uh, dashed orange line, of around 64 miles per hour. And then from there, you have some that are faster and some that are slower. It's a, it's a typical bell curve. Um, and this is what generally is called a normal distribution. So in this webinar, to make it more relevant, we've selected um, data from a recent athlete that came in for an assessment uh, to kind of put some uh, specifics around uh, uh, the analysis. Uh, you can see that there is a um, yellowish, uh, light yellow column it's titled U. That's the specific data for the metrics for this athlete. He's a collegiate level athlete when you can see the ranges as provided by BLAST in the blue column. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but BLAST has national averages um, off their database, which they list as where um, most of the athletes um, basically uh, perform in those ranges at, 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 at any given level. So just as an example, this athlete's bat speed, 64 miles an hour, BLAST's um, suggested collegiate range is 66 to 75. Uh, we'll cover each of these metrics more specifically in the slides ahead. So in this webinar, uh, we're going to follow BLAST metrics by categories, um, plane, connection, and rotation. Uh, the next section up will be ro the rotation metrics. The rotation metric uh, consists of bat speed and rotational acceleration. And to go a little, little bit deeper, we're going to look at a couple of charts. Um, you can see on this chart, uh, we have put up a normal distribution of this athlete's bat speed. So his average bat speed at 64 miles per hour um, is that the dashed orange line on the left-hand side of the, uh, the black line. 
Uh, the two black lines are the ranges, um, as uh, basically recommended by Blast for his level. So you'll see they're around 66 to 75 miles an hour. Uh, if you remember on the prior slide, I mentioned his average is 64, and perhaps it doesn't look so bad when you look at the low end of 66. Um, but when you look at the bell curve, you really get a sense for how few or how little of his swings are even above 66 miles per hour, which is the low end of this. Um, so the reason to really look at a normal distribution is to see that um, how how much of your actual uh, swing patterns are anywhere near the range, above the range, below the range. And as you can see, even if the average looks okay, uh, this normal distribution tells you that this athlete's swings are predominantly below average. Uh, which is obviously not a good thing. The expected average for this level is 70, 71 miles per hour, which is the dash blue line. So to really end up in a zone where you think that basically most of your swings are at least within the range or hopefully above the range, you really need to be near, um, near the dash blue line. Uh, that's why normal distribution is so powerful when you look at it like this. So here's a uh, <clears throat> normal distribution of his rotational acceleration uh, on the same exact swings. Um, the minimum target for his level, according to Blast, should be around 13, 13 Gs. Uh, his average is 9.4, and you can see how the normal distribution graph just falls, the bell curve falls way below 13 Gs. So this athlete definitely is lacking um, a, a collegiate level uh, a degree of uh, rotational acceleration. Now on this uh, chart we've uh, put together his bat speed and his rotational acceleration on the same chart. So the black box um, with the right hand side open is basically explaining where this college level athlete should be, uh, how fast he should be swinging the bat and what his rotational acceleration should look like. When you look at his data you can clearly see that all those blue dots are just outside the box. So this athlete in general is, is underperforming um, from where he should be. Next up is his plane score, and uh, we're going to go through a similar type of analysis. Now we're going to talk about early connection and connection at impact angles. Um, if you'd like to review uh, what these metrics mean, please refer to the prior webinar about understanding blast metrics. So this athlete's early connection, um, which is the blue bell curve line, uh, you can see it's well outside the suggested range of um, 80 to 105 degrees. Um, his connection at impact <coughs> is within the range, and he seems to bring it back down to 90 degrees at impact. Uh, what Blast is basically saying is that you really want these bell curves to converge, to be closer to each other, to have a smoother, more consistent swing. Um, they don't have to be exactly on top of each other, but they're suggesting a difference of no more than 15 degrees, and obviously less is better. Um, so in this circumstance, um, since the connection at impact is well within the range, you want to work with this athlete to bring his early connection angle down farther uh, to get them closer to each other. Uh, what I'd like you to focus on here is really the overlap. Um, look at the overlap of the blue line and the orange line. There is at practically none. Um, so this is what Blast is referring to when they're basically saying they're looking for a more consistent bat path um, by getting those angles closer to each other. We're getting to the uh, final metric here with a connection score. So let's uh, let's keep moving. Blast's uh, connection score consists of the attack angle and the on-plane efficiency percentage. Um, as you can tell from this chart, um, once again, the bell curve is the normal distribution of the th this athlete's attack angles over the 100 swings. Um, the orange dash line is his average. Uh, you can see it's at the upper end uh, of the suggested range. Uh, Blast suggestion is 0 to 15 degrees on the attack angle. We actually um, think it should be closer to 5 to 15 degrees. That's our suggested range. So when his attack angle is hovering around 15 and a half, 
once again, you might think that, hey, it's not so bad. It's at the upper end of the range. But, you know, with swings and all the variability, you can quickly tell that more than half of his swings are well above the upper end of this range. So once again, the normal distribution really lays out pretty nicely why the average is not as relevant and you really want to look at a normal distribution versus any suggested ranges. In the prior webinar, um, um, Understanding Blast Motion Metrics, uh, we talked about uh, vertical approach angle, which is the angle of the incoming pitch. Um, fastball being closer to 5 degrees and breaking balls being closer to 13, 14 degrees. Now, if you take this athlete's bell curve and he rarely ever has an attack angle, which is in the mid-single digits, um, I can say that he's going to have a hard time meeting a 95-mile-an-hour fastball with a 4, 5, 6-degree uh, vertical approach angle. Um, so you really want to move your, your overall bell curve to kind of the middle um, of those two black lines to be uh, to be able to have success on, on both the uh, the fastballs and the breaking balls. Uh, 16 is clearly too high. It's not to say that there aren't MLB guys who have high attack angles. I'm sure there are, uh, but I know for a fact that the average MLB attack angle is around um, high single digits, eight and a half nine degrees, and they're probably looking at a bell curve that straddles pretty nicely between 5 and 15. Um, so I think it's important to um, <clears throat> to know where you are and perhaps why you're having difficulty in at, at different, uh, at different uh, pitch speeds. Okay, so now we've charted um, his attack angle against his on-plane efficiency percentage. And uh, you can see that the black box is really um, uh, represents the target area of where you'd like your on-plane efficiency and your attack angle to sit. So last recommendation for on-plane efficiency is between 70 and 85 percent and their attack, our, attack, our attack angle ranges 5 to 15. So you can quickly see how many swings are really outside this box. Um, the attack angle tends to be a little bit high for more than half the swings and obviously his on-plane efficiency is um, is lower than it should be. Uh, so this athlete has a little bit of work to do. So let's quickly review what we've learned from looking at this stuff from a statistical um, standpoint. Uh, on bat speed, um, <clears throat> his bat speed of 64 may, may not look so bad because it's close to the low end of the range, but when you look at a normal distribution, more than half of his swings are well below the range. Rotational acceleration, same thing. Um, the vast majority of them are below um, the uh, collegiate level suggested uh, number from blast. Um, early connection <clears throat> to connection at impact, that's where the two bell curves really need to converge some more. Um, the, the overlap between the two of them was just really not that much. There's a 21 degree difference between early connection and connection impact here on the average numbers. And uh, <clears throat> you really wanted those bell curves to be closer together. Um, on plane efficiency, 67, not too far below the bottom end of the range, attack angle slightly above the top end of the range. It may not look so bad, but when you really look at them on a chart uh, graphed against each other, you'll see that he was never inside the box or hardly ever inside the, the suggested ranges. Um, so <clears throat> it's important to dig a little bit deeper um, on the BLAST data to really get a good sense for what you're looking at. Um, averages alone really don't give you a full picture. And oftentimes they might make you think it's okay. Um, so make sure that you really dig a little bit deeper into the BLAST data. So just to summarize here, um, BLAST is a great tool. Um, it's a tiny little sensor you attach to the knob and it tells you an enormous amount about your swing. Um, the data has to be um, analyzed. Um, you can't just look at the averages that's presented and, and reach definitive conclusions. Um, we create these, uh, we create reports on, on BLAST data all the time for our athletes, which lays out what the normal distributions look like and how variability of the swing is affecting their bad path in, in various circumstances. Um, you know, hitting is a series of interconnected events. Um, and I think you really have to dig deep to, to, to understand this data and apply it um, in your training. 
you, know, you miss one metric, it may not be so bad, but miss two or three or more, then all of a sudden you're going to have you're going to start having some difficulty at the plate. So um, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, we really think um, uh, you, you should dig a little bit deeper into the BLAST data before reaching any definitive conclusions. Um, that's it. Over and out. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. If you're interested in our training material on pitching, hitting, or strength training, you can reach us at rocklandpeakperformance.com or on Twitter and Instagram at rpp underscore baseball. You can also call our front desk at 201 308-3363 or email us at rpp at rocklandpeakperformance.com Also, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel on the way out.